Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. Now today's video has been inspired by uh, a supporter who posted some pictures on my Facebook page and it was Michael Kez who has posted some absolutely fantastic pictures of his Praetorian 100, uh, 14th Rifles. Now Michael has recently uh, attended a ITC tournament, his first ITC tournament, and unfortunately he didn't do very well. He was running a pure infantry army, uh, and on paper everything to work, everything was working great. And when he did get his turns in, it was doing he was doing fantastically. But the problem was is that they were running chess clocks at the ITC tournament, and so he never got past his turn three. Obviously, in ITC with chess clocks. You run out, you have your allotted 90 minutes, but then after that, even if you're 90 minutes right, your opponent can then just keep going and going and going. So his opponent could easily have got to rounds four, five, six, you know, and um, Michael would have had to sit there doing nothing. So what Michael said is, how can I speed up my tournament play? Okay, absolutely fantastic question. And I'm going to, this is what today's video is going to be about. How can you go into a tournament especially with well with imperial guard but also in general but especially if you're running a horde army now i have done videos on this topic before but they are quite out of date i think they are actually based in seventh edition my my last video on how to speed up tournament play so i'm going to do a general advice video today how to speed up your tournament play and then what i'm actually going to do on the back of this michael is i'm going to go down uh, and do a do a breakdown of a series of videos. I'm going to launch a new series on how to prepare for a tournament and how to successfully operate within a tournament. I'm not going to do how to win a tournament, but it will be more focused on how to conduct yourself in a tournament and how to prepare for one. So how can you speed up your tournament play, especially when you are using chess clocks? Well, there are a number of things you have to do before you even go to that tournament. Okay, before you even think about what you're actually going to do on that first game, there are a number of things you can do to speed up play. First thing, and it sounds really basic, but it is know your army. Okay. Know the army that you are using at the back of your hand. If you're not going in there, now we're talking, you know, if this is the first tournament you're attending, okay, or, or one of the first. Don't go in, you know, if, you, if you're, you know, used to a tournament or you're using a, or a, a net list, which is very simple and easy to, uh, to pilot, fine, whatever. But we're talking about if you're taking your army to a tournament, make sure you know the army that you're using. Study your codex from front to back. Know every unit's data sheet by, that you're using. You don't have to know every single one of the codex, but every single data sheet in your army, you should know before you go to that tournament. Because the last thing you want to be doing is flicking through your codex, trying to remember basic unit stats. Now, this is relatively easy to do with the Imperial Guard. Everyone's Strength 3, everyone's Toughness 3, everyone's got one wound practically, everyone's got a 5 plus save practically. The only, you know, know the difference, it might sound simple, know the difference between what veterans can do and what basic garrison squads can do. Know the, know the special abilities of your Tempesta Scions. If you're running tanks and you're running Lehman Russes, Make sure you know what the weapons on your Lehman Russes are. Don't have, you shouldn't have to look. You should, you should know all the abilities of every unit that you're using off the top of your head. Until you know that, I wouldn't say you should go to tournament. Because all you're going to be doing, especially in this age of chess clocks, all you're going to be doing is wasting valuable time, minutes. You only have 90 minutes. So if you spend even just, you know, one minute checking something in your codex. You have used more than 1% of your time for that tournament. And when you put it like that, that's actually quite scary. So you should never have to check your codex. Okay, the only time you should have to check your codex is if your opponent asks you to show you something within the codex. And remember guys, if he asks to see something in your codex, in most chess clock tournaments, that time flips, that timer flips over to him. 
that's to stop your opponent from asking you loads of questions to use all your time up. Okay, so don't forget that. If he asks you a question, you check something, you flip the time over to him, and you show him as quickly as possible. Now, that's not true for every tournament. That's not true for every tournament, okay? But that is true for some tournaments, okay? And this leads me, so make sure you know your list in, uh, make sure you know the units in your list inside and out, okay? Second thing, before I forget, know the rules pack. So make sure, might sound basic, is it an ETC style tournament? Is it an ITC style tournament? They play completely differently. If you're going to a tournament, you need to make sure you know what uh, what each of the missions is. You should never go to a tournament, and I'm I'm guilty of this on occasion. But if I go for a to tournament last minute, but if you if you know the tournament you're going to and you've had time to prepare, you should know every single mission. What's round one? What's round two? What's round three? What's round four? What's round round five? You're playing a six day tournament, a uh, six game tournament. What's on round six? Okay, know every single mission, and before you because you because valuable time remember you typically have a 15 minute setup time that's including both players deployments and knowing the rules and setting the board up for the for the mission even if it's just placing objectives down make sure you know what every single mission in that rules pack is without even having to look at it okay again that will save you valuable minutes make and so make sure that speaking so this so you've got to make sure you know your data sheets of every unit in your list make sure you know the rules pack and make sure you're practiced okay do not turn up to a tournament with a list you haven't previously used unless you are a really good player you will just be slow and you will make mistakes it's a simple case of just practicing before you go now that's not just practicing with your list okay that's also practicing the mission see how we're we're intertwining about knowing your list knowing the missions what's the best way to know your list and know your missions by practicing before you go last tournament not the very like one one of the uh, recent tournaments i went to last tournaments i went to at the end of last year i ran my purely mechanized armageddon steel legion list in a meta when everyone was geared up for killing knights. So if people can kill knights, they can kill chimeras fairly easily. I won four out of five games, quite simply because I knew the I knew every single mission in the mission pack, so I was playing to the mission every single game, and I have used my Armageddon Steel Legion list 30 times, if not more. I've used it in every shape and size. I've used it at 500 points, 1,000 points, 1,250, and 2,000 points. Every scale of game magic. I've used it in two in two v twos. I've used it in one v ones. I've used it in big three, four, five player apocalypse games. I've used it in every single shape and size. I know that list at the back of my hand. I never have to open my codec. It has the same warlord trait every time. It has the same configuration of units practically every single time. Chapter approved sometimes makes me. Uh, drop, you know, lets me squeeze in an extra sentinel, but there is no difference. I know my armor against the other legion. They are now my tournament army. My Mordians are my uh, are my home army. And my steel legion are my away army. I know them very, very well. E and I have units in there which people consider substandard, like sentinels. But I make them work. And after every game, people go when I beat them, and I'm I'm facing I'm facing you know that last in that last tournament I was facing. <sighs> biker lists and all sorts of crazy shit that should have tied should have tied up my uh, my army and i still won I, I faced lists that were the antithesis of my list the perfect counter and i still beat them purely because i knew my list inside and out i never had to check my codex now this leads me on to the second not only do you need to check your codex uh what well, you don't want to have to check your codex uh for I'm trying to think about to say you don't there's a, it's a little something about checking codex not just for yourself you should know everything but your opponent your list especially if you're running an imperial guard list should be very well structured and the models in there should be very easily recognizable not just for your opponent not just for yourself but for your opponent okay every single one of my chimeras is the same it has two heavy bolts and a heavy stubber my opponent can see that 
very clearly on the model. Two heavy bolters and a heavy stubber. Very easy to identify. There's nothing in there where I, might, where I say, oh yeah, that's got um, some outrageous combo, then your opponent asks you to check it. So this is this is slightly outside of the guard comfort zone. But if you uh, if you're running something like Genius Le Cult, for example, and you've got like some wacky combo of like ten stratagems that lets you do a three sixty no scope and just like destroy your opponent's units. If you run a if you run a army like that that can just power ball your opponent, your opponent is more than likely going to ask you to sh to show you how does that work. And then you will have to spend time explaining to them how it works. Now that's you know that could, that's, that can be absolutely fine, if, especially if you're running a relatively elite list where that's not a problem. But um, it is minutes that are being taken up by the game, and that might not be in minutes on your opponent's side. It might be, it might not be. So I would say, especially if you're running a guard list, it sounds crazy, but don't run something that's totally wacky. Run something that is down to earth and makes sense. And especially if this is your first first tournament. You don't want to be running something that is overly complicated. Not just for your opponent's sake, but also for your sake. Okay. And this leads me on to another point. Which is that's all the stuff really that's pre-game. Pre-tournament. Before you even go, that's your sort of pre-tournament prep. The last thing I would say, and this will help us slide effortlessly into talking about what it's like when you're actually at the tournament, uh, is your list should be very distilled. It should be very homogenous. Okay, what do I mean by that? Well, if you have nine units of Imperial Guards, uh, Guardsmen in your army, they shouldn't, every, each one of those units should be identical or near as damn it okay you shouldn't be they should not all be unique you shouldn't have one with a flamer one with a flamer and power sword one with a grenade launcher one with a plasma gun one with a plasma gun and plasma pistol no no no, no. they should be all las cannon and melter or all or if you're running a pure infantry arm for example and you're taking 18 infantry squads those six are las cannon and melter those six are las cannon and plasma gun. Those six are auto cannon and grenade launcher. Should be very, if possible, every single one of them should be identical. Eighteen las cannon melter gun squads. If you were taking it to an extreme, the reason why that's really important is it it means that any time you look at one of your squads, you know exactly what is in that squad. You don't even need to look at it. You just look at the number of models and you quickly go, right, that was a 10-man squad. They've lost four riflemen. There's typically six riflemen in that squad. So that's two lasguns I've got in there, plus one for the heavy weapon team. There's a las cannon. There's a grenade launcher. Sergeant's got the last pistol. He's not out of range. Right. So that means I've got three lasgun shots, one grenade launcher. I'll fire the uh, uh, crack grenade and one las cannon shot. Done. And you should know that, for ev even if your squad's taking casualties, because you know all you need to do it's just look at the squads and they're all identical. And your opponent, it's much easier for your opponent as well. Because your opponent knows it doesn't matter which infantry squad he targets, they all have the same loadout. Easy to remember. Very easy to remember. Taking three Lemurus tank commanders, all battle cannon, last cannon, two heavy bolters. El Clasico. Slightly different with Russes because they're, they are big vehicles and you might want to mix and match. But even if you're taking three tank commanders, Try and make it obvious what they're equipped with. Don't have, I've got one Punisher and he's got a last cannon and two heavy flames, and then I've got another Punisher and he's got three heavy bolters. You know, no. If you're running Punishers in your list, they all have this loadout. If you're running Battle Cannons in your list, they all have this loadout. If you're running Infantry Squads, so the front six squads, they are cannon fodder ones. They've only got a flame reach. Easy to remember. The ones that I've got heavy weapons in have all got the same. Last cannon and melter gun, last cannon and plasma, auto cannon, heavy bolter and plasma. It doesn't matter. They've all got the same. If it's a 10-man squad with no special weapons, if it's a 10-man squad, they've always got a single melter If it's a ten, if it, with no heavy weapon. If it's a 10-man squad with a heavy weapon, it's always a last cannon and a plasma. I know I'm really emphasizing this point, but I cannot tell you how important that is. Okay, Because it will help you not only for learning your list, it will also help your opponent. And it will help you because it means you know exactly what every single squad is capable of. If you, if every single squad is armed the same, then you can expect the same results from every single squad that you pick. It's easy. 
Now moving on to the tournament itself. Okay, several things you can do whilst playing uh, that will help you speed up. The most important, the biggest mistake I see people making is, especially running pure infantry, is they 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 don't build a list with them. They don't they don't have a set plan for each game. Okay. 40k isn't that complicated. It's take objectives and it's kill things. At the core of it, that's the same thing as a mission. It doesn't matter what the mission is. If you're controlling more objectives than your opponent, it doesn't really matter what the mission is. Generally speaking, you're going to be winning. If it's cumulative, great. At the end of the game, it's great. doesn't really matter. As long as you aim for objectives and you aim to kill stuff, it's relatively easy. Okay, just remember those two things. That's all you have to do in 40k is hold objectives and kill things. There's nothing else you have to achieve. Okay, so before you even go, it, it, it shouldn't, you should, you should have a general plan for every single game. And it literally should not matter what army you face off against. This, this is very much from an Imperial Guard perspective, or any Horde army really. But it really should not matter what army you you should be facing. You should have a you should have a set plan. And I'll give you an example. When I'm running my Mordians, okay, purity Mordians, I look at where the objectives are on the board, and I and I literally say to myself, right, I've got 180 guys plus you know plus some more. But I've got 180 line infantry. I'm going to dedicate 60 line infantry to holding the two objectives in my half of the field. 30 on each one, easy. Then I know exactly what how much is holding each one. 30 on each one. There's two objectives in the middle of the board that I really want to get my hands on. I'm probably not going to get the two that are in my opponent's edge. So what I'm going to do is take another 60 infantry and they're going to go for one objective. And another and my other my remaining 60 infantry and they're going to go for the other objective. And then all I need to do each turn is just move towards those objectives. All I need to do, and the only thing I really need to achieve along the way is holding those objectives for as long as possible, for as many turns as possible, and ideally by the end of the game. And I need to kill things that are nearest to those objectives or that are most likely to threaten them. That's it. It's very easy. You just march wave after wave of infinity. You just keep marching forward. You just keep killing things that are killing you. And it's easy as it's, it sounds so basic but you're you don't really need to have like top tier target priority if 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 an enemy has got 30 or boys that are charging towards one of your objectives and, and if you don't kill them next turn they're gonna they're gonna kill you just kill those 30 or boys just every all 60 men in this platoon kill those boys easy just march onto the objectives and you just and you know every single game it doesn't matter what the deployment type is it doesn't matter where the objectives are you just know these 60 infantry are for home defense, those 60 for taking one objective, and those 60 for taking another objective. That's all you need to do. And that is your general plan. And that way, you know what you're going to be doing for the first two turns, pretty much. The first third of the game, you're going to be enacting out the generic battle plan. Then, that's, that's, that's what you want to be going in. So you've, you've finally deployed your models... Okay, You've, your deployment is part of this plan. So you know that 60 on the left, 60 on the right, 60 in the middle, roughly. You know that's how it's, platoon 1 takes left, platoon 2 takes centre, platoon 3 takes the right. Easy peasy. Um, when, I, when, used to, when I used to run pure infantry exclusively in 7th edition, I deployed exactly the same way every single game. I had two squads of conscripts that went strung out across the front of my deployment zone, screening my units. On the left flank, I always put auto cannon grenade launcher blob. In the middle, I always put las cannon melter gun blob. And on the right, I always put missile launcher plasma gun blob. Always. Never, never altered deployment. Didn't really matter. Didn't really matter if that, was, if that wasn't the most efficient. Because all my heavy weapons have got a 48 inch range and it doesn't matter so i'm always gonna be able to reach out and do overlapping fields of fire and i had you know i had um i had four you know i had like 16 heavy weapons like some they're always going to be able to see something and shoot something and it's the same in eighth edition as well same in eighth edition just you have your set deployments easy peasy 
Now, you've finally done your deployment, you've got your generic plan, okay, and you're finally playing the first few turns, right? Now, some of you are saying, oh, but don't you have to really react to what your opponent's doing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, a bit. Sounds crazy, right? Yeah, a bit. But um, how I would think about this is, uh, well, the biggest, well the, sorry, the biggest mistake I see newer tournament players making is when they are, when it's the opponent's turn, they're not planning what to do in their turn. Okay. So why do your opponents go? You shouldn't just be watching in there sort of half concentrating on what he's doing and, oh, I'll roll some armor saves. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's my, it's my turn again. Shit, what do I want to do? Oh, fuck. No, no. You should, you should be, whilst he's doing his turn, you should be half aware of what he's doing and half already planning on what you're going to do your turns three, turns four. You know, if it's, and it doesn't have to be really specific in-depth planning. It can be as simple as, okay, He's deployed mostly on the left flank and he's, you know, first platoon is taking an absolute hammering. Uh, I've got some scions in reserve. Um, they could really do with, the, you know, that flank could really do with some strengthening. So I guess I'm going to turn three, throw all my scions down there and see what happens. That's all it has to be. You're all, as, he, as your opponent is doing his things, you need to be planning what you're going to do in response. Don't wait until your turn to then start planning how you're going to respond to it. You should already have a rough idea. And remember, you are you are following a generic plan. You have to be a little reactionary, but if you stick to your plan, you're going to force your opponent to react to you, and you're going to maintain the momentum. So you've played the game, and there's not always huge amounts of time between rounds. Okay, and so what's really important is. And this is why I'm not a big fan of squad markings. Okay, and this is this is sort of what you're doing when you're packing when you're packing your models up for between games and you're transporting them. Okay, especially if you're running a pure infantry army, but this applies to any guard army. I do with my st steel legion. Don't worry about which models are in which squad as long as the loadouts are the same. So, taking my steel legion squads for example, I know every single squad in there has a bolter and a plasma gun and eight rifle guys okay it doesn't matter if you know the bolter and the plasma gun and the eight rifle guys are the ones that i built and painted together and they were squad number three of alpha platoon and they for them this, this hardcore squad and they've always been together and the sergeant plasma gun guy i've got this bond and this is really important that those two models don't fuck all that it doesn't matter those models stay together you just take your models off you put them on the side of the board you put them on your tray in rough piles and then at the end of the game you quickly go right eight riflemen bolter plasma eight rifle bolter, and you just the squads just get mixed up and it doesn't matter but as long as the loadouts are the same that's what's important otherwise you'll be spending so much time trying to make sure that melted gun guy goes with the right squad and you'll just be wasting so much time um just make sure the loadouts make sense and that will be much easier to do if every squad pretty much has the same loadout. It's why I used to advocate, and I still do, and I've started swinging back towards it, my go big or go home strategy. If you just pay for the best guns on every unit, if everyone's got a las cannon and a melter gun, then it's easy. Everyone, you know, you've got the best tools for pretty much every job, and you know what the loadout's going to be on every squad. So there you go, guys. There is a, there's probably some bits and bobs that I have missed out. But they're my general tips for speeding up your tournament play. Now, I'm going to do, uh, like I said, a series on how to prepare for the tournament, how to organize yourself in the tournament. Loads of different bits of advice. Um, sort of tournament 101. Uh, and I, th I, hope, I hope you guys will find it, find it useful. Um... If there's anything that you think I've missed, then please put it down in the comment section below. And if there's anyone who's watching this video, uh, I, who's who's thinking about going to a tournament for the first time or is looking for some ways to improve their, their speed, go down to the comment section below because that is where half of the good knowledge is. And there'll be loads of little tips and tricks that people will have, uh, that people will have developed that will help them, um, that, that will help them play faster. You know, uh, the last one to say that I may have missed is 
um, if there's a squad of like a ten man, let's say there's a, if there's, a, there's, a, there's a dead ass squad in front of you that you don't think you're going to kill, like a a full ten man intercessor squad, then don't fire your guardsmen squads one at a time. Fire them two to three groups at a time because one guardsman squad isn't going to wipe out a full ten man intercessor squad. I don't think even if you had all the shots, it could visit, it it could do it. But you know, three squads would def will you know will take will take a chunk out of it and may kill it. And you might overkill slightly, but don't worry about overkilling. Don't be there constantly saying like, "Oh, I'm going to split the last cannon off there and the plasma gun off there and four last was there and three last was there." No, that squad is shooting everything into that target, even if it is not the ideal thing to do. Even if the last cannon should be going into a long range unit. No, everything. This squad is shooting that. This squad is shooting that. Do the two squads together, roll all the dice together, easy. That's the last That's the last thing I forgot to mention. And if there's anything else that I've forgotten, please put it down in the comment section below. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I look forward to reading the comment section and picking up some new tips for myself. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, I'll see you guys next time.